the Audacious Ask, and my name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. And what does the Audacious Ask you ask yourself? Well, one thing that I've noticed is that we have been programmed for, to ask for less than we desire, less than is exciting, less than we can actually create with, probably less than we can actually pay our bills with or even have vacations with. And what would it be like if we decided to ask for more? <laughs> so many of us manage to pull a rabbit out of a hat when we actually quote unquote need something, but everyday living is sometimes a bit of a stretch. And so I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be. I'm a certified access consciousness facilitator and also a right riches for you facilitator. And what access consciousness is about is learning to ask questions to bring about an awareness of what you could change or choose to add more to your life, to change something in your life. And yeah, so what we do is uh, every week we go live, every week that I'm available and I'm not traveling for my business, um, and start to ask some questions. And so if somebody does ask a question and it sounds like your question, then start to listen because the facilitation that they will receive might be applicable to you. And so nothing that ever comes out of my mouth is absolutely right and true for you. So you can check and see. And if something that I say sounds bubbly and fun to try, then absolutely try it. And if it sounds like, huh, I don't like that, then it might be a little bit of resistance. Uh, but if it's really heavy and you're like, ma, when I say that, then that's not true for you. And so, yeah, let's try it out. Uh, for more about Access Consciousness, hop on over to accessconsciousness.com. And then there's also something that we use called The Clearing Statement. So pop on over to theclearingstatement.com if you wonder what that weird garbly goop that comes out of my mouth is every once in a while. So the first person I saw was Jackie. Jackie, what's your audacious ask? Do you have an audacious ask? Yes. So I see glimpses of magic in my life. And number one is I'm learning to acknowledge it more than I used to. Mm -hmm. In the past, when I saw magic, I would say, oh, I must have been in the right vibration and it's law of attraction. Yeah. <laughs> <All of that. laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and so I am learning to acknowledge that I have I am creating it more mm -hmm. and then it seems to disappear it's like the magic wand has disappeared from my hand mm. so my, it audacious ask is what if I could have the wand in my hand 24-7 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you listen to that. Like if you listen to this recording, Jackie, later, you're going to hear that you've made something outside of you, the magical element. You called it a wand. And mm -hmm. so what if there wasn't a magical element? It was more about being aware and being present. Mm -hmm. So anything that doesn't allow you to be aware and present more than you've been ever before and for it to be ease will you destroy and uncreate that will you press the delete button yes awesome good and bad right and wrong pod and pock all nine boys shorts and beyonds and that's the strange garbledy goop called the clearing statement <laughs> <laughs> so um hmm. so when you ask for something are you asking for something because it's fun or are you asking for something because you need it? Or are you asking for something for some other reason? Because I need it. Ah. And I'm telling myself that's the route that will make me the money. Cool. Cool. So everywhere you're only going to ask for something because it's needed. Um, what if you had a different choice? What if there was a list of things or a list of a thousand things um, that were fun for you to receive money for and with and to? Um, and then you just started asking, okay, which of you things would like to come to me today? You know what I mean? Because so many of us are programmed that we are only allowed to ask for stuff when it's needed. And that's where I am. 
Yeah, yeah. So everybody that feels like need in your universe, would you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Good and bad, right and wrong, pod and pock, all nine, boy shirts and beyonds. Truth, are you needy? Sometimes it feels like. Yeah, it feels like a yes and a no. Okay, so everywhere you've been needy, will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Good and bad, right and wrong, pod and pock, all nine, boy shirts and beyonds. And everywhere you've misapplied or um, misinterpreted needy and took it on as you, will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Awesome. Good and bad, right and wrong, pod and pock, all nine, boy shirts and beyonds. So um, if you weren't needy, uh, who's needy um, could you accidentally be picking up on the Wi-Fi? Uh, my friend <laughs> in India who just lost her husband and my sister. Like tons of people. Yeah. Cool. And so um, there's a tool, you know this one, Jackie, but um, just to remind everybody on the call if they never ever heard it before, um, is infinite being. And so an infinite being, like you think, um, you know, like if you grew up in the church, you'd call it a child of God or um, uh, just sort of that energy. It's like you came in here with everything that you needed or quote unquote needed. Um, and, you know, it's all up to you uh, to choose uh, to actualize, like to make it show up or ask for it to show up. Um, so as an infinite being, Jackie, um, can you know that your friend or your sister, they're also infinite beings as well? Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Do you feel that the energy change? <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was good. And so when we buy other people's stories of needy and our own stories of needy, then what happens is we create a universe where we are needy, <laughs> which is fun, but it's probably not your best choice, right? Wouldn't it be nice if people just gave to you because it was fun for them? Yeah. And wouldn't it be nice if you just gave to you because it was fun for you? Yes. Yeah, instead of like, oh, well, I need some money because I got a big bill coming in. Wow. Yeah. not hey what would it take to create you know what can I choose or what can I create so that I can have money to go to a seven day yeah <laughs> which when you decided you were going to go to a seven day was pretty darn easy for you to actualize wasn't it yeah. <laughs> I remember that so um for everybody else who's listening think of a circumstance where you were like oh my god that would be so great and the money was just like, sure. And it just like piled into your bank account or you had the ability to do it or somebody said, hey, would you like that? I'll get that for you. Yeah. What would it be like if you were the one who could get that for you? Yeah. Yeah. Anything that doesn't allow it, will you destroy it and create it? Okay. Good and bad, right and wrong, pod and pock, all nine boy shirts and beyonds. Yeah. It's becoming yeah. so much less fun for me uh, now because it's like... I wake up and I spend the first two hours doing all the access tools because uh -huh. I have to be a good access person. Ugh, and hard. when I do, <laughs> I will actualize. So I will do this and I'll pock and pot and, and I'm like exhausted. I'm okay. Like, all right. So everywhere the pock and pod has been the gym membership that you have to go to uh, in order to be able to actualize the rest of your life. <laughs> 24 hour fitness, 24 hour pock and pod, everything that is, will you just try and uncreate it? Yes. Okay, good and bad, right and wrong, pod and pock, all my boy shirts and pants. What would your body actually like to do first thing in the morning? Just go to my garden and enjoy a cup of coffee there. Okay, cool. So yes. what if you just did that for an entire two weeks or a month? Every morning for two hours in the morning, you just went in your garden and had coffee and wrote stuff in a journal. And what if the top of your journal said, my audacious asks, and you thought of like 25 things that were crazy and fun that you could ask for. <laughs> and you weren't allowed to leave your garden until you wrote down 25 things. <laughs> Doesn't that feel so much more exciting? Yeah, I love that. 
Yeah, well, with that much resistance to the actual, you know, 24 hour fitness of Pock and Pod, yeah. um, can you feel how that's not gonna actualize anything? No, like my neck's so tight. I'm yeah, like, heavy, gah. Yeah, yeah. I see clients and um, other access consciousness facilitators, bars facilitators, CFs, and they're treating access consciousness like it's the thing that's going to get me get you the things. And so, truth is access consciousness the thing that's going to get you the things. No, no. <laughs> it's something you can do, and if it's fun for you, it's something you can try. And, you know, for myself, uh, including access conscious in my life makes me better looking, smarter, wealthier. I have more fun friends, more cool opportunities. I feel lighter. I love being in my body way more. Um, the people that I know uh, who do the same thing that I do uh, are so fun. And, you know, when it starts being a chore, like something that you have to choose because it's the only thing that's going to get you from A to B. Yeah. <sighs> oh, fucks. everything that is, we destroy and create it. Yes. Awesome. Good and bad, right and wrong, pod and pop, all nine boy shorts and beyonds. Yeah. So when it becomes a no choice universe, when anything becomes a no choice universe, when a relationship does, when like a healing modality does, when a spiritual modality does, you know, when you have a personal trainer that's like, oh, five more sit-ups, and then lies and wants you to do 25 more sit-ups. Yeah. You know, like when it becomes like that, that's what heavy feels like. Yes. Yeah. And heavy never works. Yeah. You know, it's like when it, somebody tries to like shame you or blame you into buying their product. Yeah. You're like, okay, well, I'll buy it because I think I need it. Yeah. Well, when you buy something because you think you need it, what happens? No works. Yeah, it never works. <laughs> <laughs> when you buy something because you think it's fun, <laughs> you might do it a lot longer, right? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. asking because that's a great question. So many people are like, this access consciousness thing you keep talking about. What is it? I'm like, I don't know. Just come and see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maggie. So the next person I saw was Jane. Jane, what's your audacious ask? Sorry, there we go. Um, um, well, I think you answered it because... Um... <laughs> You're going to talk about the gym of potty pocky? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gym of gym of Becky mixes and the gym of um, the gym of what reading books and I must admit I'm loving book blessed possibilities. And it's a great book. It does trigger my Becky mixes? <laughs> yeah, right. It's a good so, one. It's a good one to trigger. Yeah, just jump in. So for anybody who didn't listen to the last one, we were talking about um, like basically who's making your choices for you. And there mm. can be these things that acronym is Becca mixes, but it's bodies, heads, uh, what was that? Categoricals, endowments, endeavors, and matrices. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said them all wrong, but basically yeah. they're like an auto response system, a series of sort of little computers, entities, um, sort of an artificial intelligence that's making choices for you. Mm. <laughs> which when you turn them off you can actually make your own choices so go ahead so um so um thank you jackie because um i was taking everything way too seriously mm -hmm. um and you know that and and thank you about the magic because one of the things i'm getting is that there's magic everywhere and it's about acknowledging the magic everywhere because if i can't see that i can't see I can't see the magic. Yeah. Um, so, so um, I'm just surrounded by magic right now. Yeah. I mean, my, my tickets for China arrived yesterday. So. <laughs> I know. It's so good. 
And, uh, and, and um, what's my, I think, I think about turning this into way more fun. I think the fun thing, the fun factor is definitely what I need right now because I am, I'm, I'm a serious student. I've always been a very serious student. I'm a very good student. <laughs> I go and do my, before I paint these days, I just look at it and I go, can I see what I'm painting? If I can't, I just remove whatever's in the way of me seeing what I'm painting because that's what it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it's sort of like it's become, it's becoming um, a serious practice. That's what, that's what it's becoming. So that's why I appreciated what Jackie said is, wow, you know, um, so today I'm, you know, have I, have I uncreated and destroyed all my relationships yet? And have I, <laughs> <laughs> Have I, have I done that? And yeah, have I done right. that? So it's like, how yeah. many ways can you make yourself wrong about doing access consciousness right? Oh, oh, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Actually, it's really good. Um, I'm, I'm also in a like a little Let study. Let me the energy just for a sec, Jane. Yes, so very good. Oh, please do. About making access consciousness a serious study. Yeah. <laughs> Will you destroy and uncreate it? Yeah. Hey, good Absolutely. and bad, right and wrong, pun, talk, online, boy shirts, and beyonds. And yeah. everywhere you're unwilling to do it poorly. Yeah. Will you destroy and uncreate that? Yeah. yeah. Hey, good Absolutely. and bad, right and wrong, pun, talk, online, boy shirts, and beyonds. Yeah. You picked this in me once before. I did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> on, on Facebook, you went, are you prepared to be shitty at this? Yeah. I went, oh, I don't know if I'm prepared yeah. to be shitty at it. <laughs> Yeah, well, the thing is, is, nothing is more sort of repulsive to ourselves is yeah. when we make ourselves wrong about doing something that we're just learning. Yeah, and, and so, I do that. You know, including your body in the equation of your life, everywhere you judge you as good or bad or right or wrong um, at, mm. you know, playing with this new modality, with this new thing, um, yeah. you know, pretty soon you'll be like, well, you know what? I don't even know how to do this. So yeah, why yeah. should I even bother? Yeah. Rather than, you know, how can I do this poorly and have the ultimate results for me? Yeah. 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 And you know, have fun. You're just a baby beginner and we taught, we cleared some energy on China and now you're yeah. going to China. <laughs> Bang. It was a week. It was a week. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it wasn't even that. I think we asked on Monday and you texted us all on Friday and let us know that you got a gig. Yeah, that's right. And it was with, not with the person that I normally go there with. It's yeah. really funny because remember I said, um, you know, I get paid so badly by these people. And it was somebody else entirely out of the blue. Yeah. <laughs> Who's yeah. paying for everything, you know. Yeah. Well, that's good, hey? You know, it's like also, that's a really great question because this is something that I've been looking at in my own business is how can I reuse stuff that I've already learned, um, already, uh, you know, attributes I already have, um, mm. you know, stuff I already know how to do, um, people who already like me, um, you know what I mean? Like clients yeah, I've already yeah. had, how can I reinvent something for them that they're looking for? And, you know, so for everybody listening, you know, when you try to make yourself like good and right and true and perfect at doing anything, um, what it does is it gets in the way of your actual genius. Mm. Yeah. And so it makes me think um, the Japanese have this, uh, it's a way to do art and it's also sort of a lifestyle and it's called Wabi Sabi and I'm probably saying that completely wrong and butchering it, but it's that the beauty is in the flaw. So oh, yes. Yeah, they'll take a teacup that's been broken and then they'll glue it back with like, you know, 24 karat gold or something like that. So you can see where it's been broken, but you can also see where it's been put back together again. Yeah. It was a bit yeah. like that article yes, you promoted. Hmm? Yeah. Say that again? Uh, it was a bit like that article that you posted about the, the guy who'd been in prison and then ended up being um, a top baker. Yeah. And uh, that was beautiful because that's wabi-sabi, you know. It's like, yeah. 
that was it. Yeah, how can you reinvent Gorgeous. yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> That's what the destroy and uncreate is. It's like, okay, yeah. well, you know, if I destroy and uncreate everything that this is today, everything it is, then what can I create tomorrow? Or what can I create like in the next minute? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and not make it such a big deal. Like it's not such a big deal. Uh, and I think probably that, you know, the introduction to the miracle of what we're doing um, mm -hmm. was, was a big deal with her. Yeah, well, and there deal. were a lot of people making it a big deal. Absolutely. So wait until you tell that story 25 years from now, it yeah. likely won't be as big a deal as, yeah. as it is in the moment. Di and, Di and I are getting together and we're just going to talk about what happened. Yeah, because, you guys really need a debrief. <laughs> yeah, we do, we do. And you know, all of our communications... The bars. That, <laughs> all of our communications through that was just through um, messaging each other. Mm -hmm. We didn't, she didn't have time to talk. Mm -hmm. so, so it was just, you know, just messaging each other. And so we haven't really sat down and talked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, well, that's it. so that and uh, bars together, and just talking about what happened, uh, the Access Consciousness Bars, if you know them yet. Don't know and them yet. Um, if you don't, then hurry up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't know where to find them here, that's all. That's, oh, that's well, all. They can come to, you're close to Melbourne. There's tons of people in Melbourne. Okay, all right. Yeah. Good. Don't even worry about it. Just go yeah. on the Access website and find some. I'm, yeah. coming, in, uh, I'm coming in December, so. <laughs> <laughs> if you that long, which you better not. <laughs> no, no. You have your second bars class or your third bars class with me. So, did you get what you came for? Yeah, I did. I did. I, it's just about lightening up, really. Lighten lightening up. up. God's yeah, sake. Lighten up. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I like working with you because you are you're very light and bubbly, and that you know it just reminds me that that's where I need to be. I need well, and <laughs> of course now I'm not that serious. Much the more I'm serious we take life. <laughs> The more serious we take life, the more serious it becomes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't have time for that. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> That's I get not it. how I live my life. I'm like, if it's not funny or amusing or brilliant or useful, it's out. <laughs> yeah, I like it. No, that's a good philosophy. Uh, yeah, thank you again. It wasn't, wasn't a massive question, but it was just no, really... But we did talk about some cool just, stuff. Oh, thanks, Jane. So the next person I saw was Sally. Sally, what's your audacious ask? She's coming, I know she is. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> How are you going? Wonderful. How about That's you? Good. Uh, my audacious ask is, um, it's a bit along the lines of Jane, um, and the seriousness that happens and I'm having a lot of heaviness and resistance in my day. Okay. So, um, with, <clears throat> with what, my love? With, with just about everything. <laughs> Which is amazing, which is <clears throat> awesome. Um, you know, I, I know I need to exercise, but when I exercise, I have a lot of resistance in my body. Mm -hmm. um, I know I need to eat well, but I have a lot of resistance around that. You know, I'm trying to paint regularly and I have a lot of, I'm having a lot of resistance around that. Um, it just seems to be in every element of my life. I just don't know how to shift it. Cool. So do you know what I'm talking about when I talk about having your bars run? No. Okay. No. So there's this modality that was developed um, about 30 years ago now, and it's called the Access Consciousness Bars, and it's the beginning of Access Consciousness. And so it's technically, it's 32 points on the head that when they're lightly touched, they begin to remove the electronic um, blockages in our neurons from thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And so the best way to describe it is, you know, our brain's a little computer. And so if we have too many tabs open on the computer, then what happens? 
<laughs> that little circle keeps going tickety 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 and nothing okay. you can load <laughs> that's it yeah and so um average session would be an hour to an hour and a half and some people might some of my clients just sleep through the whole thing and they're like oh my god i feel so much better afterwards and some of my clients talk through the whole thing and they're like oh I feel so much better afterwards and you know i've had there it's actually kind of a really miraculous modality i've had clients hobble in that have been in accidents and uh, clients who are really quite ill um, with all sorts of different things and I've ran their bars and, and created a lot of miracles with it. So that's the first thing that I recommend. And then the next thing is um, who decides uh, what kind of exercise that you do? Is it you or is it an expert that's outside of you? It's, it's me. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to decide. <laughs> have you asked your body? Um, look, I have, I've tried a few things and, um, you know, I've tried walking and I went back swimming a few months ago, but after a few months, I just got so tired. Mm -hmm. So I, so I, so I just gave up. Mm, okay. And so when you do exercise, um, yeah. do you kind of like just freaking go for it and exercise every day? Uh, well, I sort of, I, I, I'm the sort of person, if I don't do it every day, I sort of, you know, get out of the routine very easily. Mm -hmm. So I sort of got to either commit or then I, then I don't do it. Okay, so that wisdom, does that come from you or does it come from someone else about you? Ask your body. Oh. <laughs> Put your hand on your belly button and tell me the answer. Um, oh, I don't know. Okay, cool. I don't, I don't know. So sometimes what happens is people are like, um, oh, well, if you don't exercise every day, there's no way you're committed to that. And then what happens is you're like, oh, I'm not committed. And so what happens is you take that as right and true in your body and it starts to feel like you and it becomes indecipherable from you. Does yeah. that feel right? Yeah. Um, okay. I think there's a lot of indecipherable things that I can't, I can't decipher whether they're mine or someone else's. I'm, okay. I've, so I'm finding bar. that very difficult to decide. Yeah. Bars for sure. So even if you have to drive an hour to find a bars practitioner, get your bars run. Yeah. And you'll begin to understand a little bit more wisdom about what it is um, for you. Um, yeah. And there's like probably 60 different access consciousness body processes that you can do to have a whole bunch of different energies come out of your body and to also invite um, more contributive energies into your body. And it's not like Reiki. It's not like somebody, you know, putting good energy into your body. Your body is actually part of your infinite being. And so in most cases, it's just dissipation of energy so that the body can realign itself. And then it's also activation of energies that are also present in the body, but they just haven't been switched on. Yeah. So, um, those are fun and um, can add a lot to the wisdom. So when you're making choices based on, you know, what's good for you um, and you're actually not in connection with your body, um, then you're just buying somebody else's BS about what's good for you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> sure. so even if, you know, you're like, oh, I'm not getting my bars run. Um, you can try it. <laughs> and if you're like, oh, I don't think I like that. You don't have to like it. Um, it's just a recommendation. It's something that's worked for me and it's worked for people all the way around the globe now. Um, I think there's bars practitioners on just about like 174 countries in the world or something like that. Yeah, so you can find one 
and uh, and try it. I find that when I actually don't know whose thoughts are swirling around in my head and swirling around in my body, it's definitely time to get my bars run. Okay. Now I get them run probably with all the facilitation that I do. I get them run two or three times a week if I'm if I'm really 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 working with people. And, uh, and then normally, you know, sort of in a, you know, sort of a lay period for myself, I get them run at least once a week. Okay. Yeah. 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 So try that. Yeah. And then, um, you can ask these questions, body, what exercise would be fun for you today? And your body might show you a picture of the couch. <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> And be okay with that. You're like, okay, body, we're going to the couch because you asked. Now, if we're on the couch for 15 minutes and you want to go dancing or you want to go um, for a walk or a swim or, you know, to the gym or to the pool or to the beach, just let me know. I'll pay attention. Okay. And then when it comes to eating, oh, gosh, there's so many, you know, it's like the church of eating. There's so many different ways of eating and you know, this thing's supposed to be good for you. And then 10 minutes later, it's not good for you. There's yeah. so much heaviness and judgment involved in eating. And um, you know, so we, we don't include our bodies in the equation of our lives. Um, and we're just consulting experts um, or, you know, the flavor of the month. You know, you're like, oh, everybody's eating paleo. I'm going to eat paleo. Or everybody's going vegan. I'm going vegan. Or, yeah. you know, it's like, uh, you know, you are an infinite being and your body is part of your infinite being. And so, you know, you can say, hey, body. Um, you know, because sometimes you'll have a sense that you're, um, you're hungry. And then you can say, hey, body, what would we like? Would we like food? Would we like a rest? Would we like something to drink? Would we like to go outside? Would we like to go back inside? Do we need a cuddle? Do we need to be made love to? You know, like ask a bunch of questions rather than assuming that you need to eat. <laughs> Sometimes what shows up as hunger is um, like some sort of an experience that your body wants to have and it isn't necessarily eating it can be just an outing yeah 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 so everywhere you've bought other people's programs with fitness and with food would you like to destroy and create that yes please hey okay, good and bad right or wrong pod and pock all nine boy shirts and beyonds nice yeah yeah. And a question you can ask yourself above that, you know, like, Hey body, what would you like is if I was truly being me, what would my body and I do today? Gosh. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks, Sally. Thank you, darling. Bye. Bye Next person I saw was Fiona. Fiona. What's your audacious ask? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Hello from Ireland. Hello from Ireland. Keep talking. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, it's um, it's eleven o'clock here at night. So, um, my audacious ask is: Was I'm listening to the conversations from the other three girls, from Jane, and Jackie, and Sally, and it's kind of a similar thread. Where I'm at is that it's the connection with my body or the communication with it as well but I just find that I seem to zone out when I when I kind of go well, what do you want to do now body what do you want to do now mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to a body class in three weeks time which I'm really looking forward to but I've become I suppose what I've been aware of the last two weeks is a lot of things happen it's almost like my body is trying to communicate with me and I'm not getting it so just okay. to give you an example Give you an example. Um, last Tuesday, just before I was due to go out the door to work, and I was literally walking from from one room in the house to another, and I fell on my right side, and it's like somebody tripped me, but there was nobody else in the house. Oh. Um, so that was one thing, and it's just I'm finding a lot of heaviness in my body as well. So even going up the stairs, it's just kind of just even trying to go up the stairs is hard work. And I'm very tired as well. So I'm just wondering. Yeah. 
Cool. So, um, how many beings are you healing with your body right now besides you? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. Can you give me a number? <laughs> um, more than 10 anyway. More than 10? True? Yeah. More yeah. than 100? True? Yeah. More than 1,000? True? Oh my God, yes. Okay, more than 10,000? Um, True? Yeah. Okay, more than 100,000? Truth? Uh, I, I can't go any further than that. Okay. <laughs> so somewhere in between 10 and 100,000. Cool. Yeah. So um, there's an old, old, old system uh, called universal surrogate. Truth, are you a universal surrogate? I got a yes on that, even though I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's where we use our body uh, to heal other people's bodies. And we have no choice. Did you hear that? The, that I have no choice? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So everything that <laughs> is, all of the oaths, vows, swearings, fealty, commitments, and contracts that you have to the universal surrogate, will you revoke, recant, rescind, renounce, denounce, destroy, and create all of them? Yes. Okay. Good and bad, right and wrong, quad and pock, all nine boy shorts and beyonds. And so when you wake up and you feel like a pancake, before you even get out of bed, a question for you is how many people am I healing with my body right now? Okay. And then you say, everything that is, I return to sender mm -hmm. with consciousness attached. And then if you really are the kind of person that naturally heals people with your body, you can say, okay, everybody get out and come back in a session. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> Yeah, I really like that. Um, That's what I do. I'm like, come back to the body on a session and money. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It kind yeah. of makes sense because I started, I suppose, well, I kind of in the middle of transitioning from my human job to, I suppose, this type of work using the body of the access consciousness tools. And that's the sense that I have. It's just like, okay, I'm, I know I can do it and I want to do it. And I know I can enjoy it and it can be fun. And it's just... They're just obviously what you've just spoken about makes total sense. Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. Cool. So, um, and then uh, what you can do is you can say, um, uh, you've heard the Beckhamex clearings already? I have, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the Beckhamex uh, we talked about last session and you've heard about them. So if this is new for anybody who's listening now, um, I'd like to refer you to the previous episode where I go quite deeply into it. Um, but Fiona, the Beckhamex entities that you have of healing with your own mm -hmm. body. Yeah. Truth, who are you? Truth, who are you before that? 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 Truth, who will you be in the future? Thank you. Your services are no longer required, desired, wanted, needed, or requested. Go back from whence you came. Never to return again to Fiona, her body, her being, her reality. Go back from whence you came. Never to return again to Fiona, her body, her being, her reality. Go back from whence you came. Go back from whence you came. Go back from whence you came. Okay. Better? Thank you. Same? Different? Mm -hmm. Much better. Lighter. Good. More space or less space? More space is great. Good. Okay. So run your Beckhamex clearings. Uh, what you can do is you can just take a little sound clip of that and, you know, just play it. Um, and then just be aware. It's like, cool, am I buying into Universal Surrogate? And it's like, okay. And then if you get a yes, then it's like, okay, well, everything that is, I destroy and create it. And good and bad, right and wrong, pod and pock, all nine boys, shorts and beyonds. And, you know, just because we can heal with our bodies doesn't mean, I know this sounds, this is going to sound really not cool. So if you want to PM me later, if this doesn't land, but it's like, we're mm -hmm. like prostitutes, <laughs> you know, just because we can heal with our bodies doesn't mean that anybody can take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, do you get it? I do. Yeah, totally. <laughs> So it's like, just because the doors are open, doesn't mean they're open at any cost or no cost. And everything that is, we just turn and create it. 
Yes. Okay, good to bad, right or wrong, pod and pock, all nine boy shorts and beyonds. The other thing about the Bechamex is because they were an artificial intelligence system for you um, that stopped a lot of things from getting in, you are going to be more aware. Yay. Cool. And so whether that shows up um, uh, with, you know, aches and pains, um, then just clear them. And then you are going to be less aware in the sense that if your Bechamex were running your um, uh, um, what is it? spatial receptors, um, mm -hmm. then, uh, then you might wipe out a little bit more than you normally do. So, you know, just slow down and pay attention to what you're up to. Um, because if you ha did have an artificial intelligence system running your life, uh, then you're going to have to pay attention and run your own damn life now. <laughs> Another adventure unfolds. Yeah, right? It's like if I was truly being me, what would I do now? Yeah, more fun anyway, definitely. I'll oh, yeah, that. we'll ask for that and more money <laughs> and yes. more possibilities and a more juicy, delicious relationship with you and your body and your being and your reality. And anything that doesn't allow that, will you just try and uncreate it? Yes. Awesome. Good and bad, right and wrong, pot and pock, all nine boy shirts and beyonds. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> You're welcome. My pleasure. Who else do I see? Christina. I see you. What's your audacious ask, Christina? We, um, firstly, I uh, bought the book Blessed Possibilities and I was reading it at night, which is something I shouldn't have done because I kept waking up in the middle of the night like five, six times a night and, and kind of like every, everything in my body was sore. Everything was painful. And I thought, oh, what's changed? <laughs> oh dear, I'm probably reading this book at night when I shouldn't be reading it at night. So I've stopped that. Stopped that. <laughs> Still reading it, but I'm just <laughs> enjoying it during the day. And the other thing I find that when I do read it, I um I'll read two or three pages, and I'll fall asleep. Right. So there's so much in there, and I'm not even not sure that I even understand it. Sometimes I'm reading it, and I'm thinking, I don't even know what that means, you know. But I'll keep reading. <laughs> That's a great anyway. question. Can I can I riff on that for just a little second? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so access consciousness is something that you can feel um, your own sort of personal truth with, you know, any of the session, like Blessed Possibilities is, um, you know, for anybody listening, is an, a book um, that was made with the transcriptions from the seven day um, in New Zealand. And so yeah. people get up to the mic at the seven day and it's like no holds barred. They can ask questions about anything. And so for anything that quote on, we call it reads is the word. So for anything that reads for you, um, so like has sort of a spike of either like um, a super agreement that that's something that you would like to change or super disagreement like, you know, F you, I don't need to change that. <laughs> Or somewhere in between those. And so it can be something that absolutely knocks you out. So, and again, like I said at the beginning of the call, you know, none of this is right and true for you unless it reads for you. Yeah. So when you're reading the book, what can happen is those changes can energize the body. Um, or they can create changes in the body and make it so it's a little harder for you to sleep, or they can just knock you the right out. <laughs> they knock me right out for about four hours, and then from about, I don't know, two in the morning onwards, I'm like awake, asleep, awake, asleep, awake, mm -hmm. asleep, you know, and then body pain, body pain, body pain. So I've stopped doing that, but I did notice the other day when I was lying on the couch at two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> It happened again. I'd read like three pages and got knocked out. Right. But that's okay because it was a beautiful day outside and I woke up and the dog was next to me and all that sort of stuff. So what is my audacious ask? My audacious ask, I'm getting, I have to get better at this because I've realized that I actually don't know how to ask, which is ridiculous. 
Which my, is part um, of this too. We're not programmed to ask. No, I don't know how to ask. We're so deep my old, actually. We were probably good at it at about two years old until it was, you know, scoffed or scorned or scolded out of us or worse. <laughs> yeah. well, well, we were told we, we couldn't ask because there was no money. So don't ask because there's nothing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can ask for because we don't, we can't supply it. So don't mm -hmm. ask. You've got everything you need, food, clothing, bare minimum, but you know, so don't ask. That's it. Just right. get on with it, you know? So we never asked. We didn't ask for anything. So whatever we received, we received with the highest levels of gratitude. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I've always been reason. I know I still have been very, very good at attracting um, money and great people. And, mm -hmm. That hasn't been great over the last few years. So what is my audacious ask? My audacious ask is to allow anybody to come into my life that is going to make exponentially growing my business that much easier. Okay. Okay. Cool. So where have you made that person the key and you the lock to growing your business exponentially? There may be no answer. So just feel the answer no. of that. So that's, see, that's where I'm confused because I'm kind of going, hey, I'm growing my business and anybody who wants to come in and just be available to, to really exponentially help me do that, show up, show up. And I'm happy to, happy to, you know, play that bigger game, if you know. Okay, I see it. When you listen to the recording, you're going to hear your voice though and you're going to see what the difference is in, in what I can hear on this side of things. So um, I'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions about your business. Okay. So um, uh, what is exponential growth to you about your business and with your business and for your business? Um, so, so over the last year or so, my business has contracted because, you know, we've had an economic downturn and, kind of like people that I would normally have who would who I would work with and work for have just kind of gone, no, we can't do anything this year or next year or perhaps even the year after. So what I do is I, I do facilitation and I do leadership and organisational development facilitation. Mm -hmm. And so I've had some really, really big projects on the go over long periods of time and it's kind of been really easy. It's just It's just been... Book, book, book me in, book me in, book me in, you know, work, enjoy, have a great time. Um, but last year's been really tough, really, really tough. Um, so, so this, I'm just going to clear you for a second here, sweetie. So everywhere this economic downturn um, has been uh, projected onto you um, and your business, would you press the delete duck button? Will you destroy and uncreate it? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay, bad, right and wrong, quad and puck, online, boy shorts and beyonds. Truth, are there industries that still thrive in an economic downturn? Yes, absolutely. Okay, definitely. so would you be willing to allow it to be you and your industry? Absolutely. <laughs> definitely. Anything that doesn't allow that, let's destroy and uncreate it. Good and bad, right and wrong, quad and puck, online, boy shorts and beyonds. Um, whose stories are you buying about the economic downturn that if you didn't buy them would change everything? Um, I guess all the businesses that I've worked for in the yeah. last few years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's an element of um, access consciousness calls it the deal and deliver. It's like, you know, what do you get out of facilitating for these people? And what do they get out of you facilitating for them? And how um, can you, everyone get their needs met or um, uh, create more together, you know, like the one plus one equals infinite possibilities. Um, 
And how can you remember, I don't know if you were on the call, but we just finished, I just finished saying that um, I've been asking, you know, how can I do things that I already know how to do in a different way? So yeah. how can you do things that you already know how to do in a different way and, you know, transcend this so-called economic downturn and turn it to your advantage? Yeah, no, that's great. Okay. So anything that yeah. doesn't allow you to be, you know, perceive and receive that, will you destroy and uncreate it? Absolutely. Awesome. So here's your homework. Um, you're going to do a Jackie McLean. You're going to go and sit somewhere beautiful for you with a cup of coffee and a notebook. And you're going to talk to your business and say, hey, what do we know how to do that we absolutely love? And who would like to play with us? Okay. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. And um, it may not actually be inviting other people into your business. And it may. And um, it may not be working with the same old clients, it may be a whole new populace of people who, because of the economic downturn, require facilitation. Yeah. And so how can you take advantage of circumstances that are quote unquote beyond your control? Yeah, fantastic. Awesome, good and bad, right around Quan Pak online boy shirts and beyond, nice. So who else have we got? We got Tunda, Tunda, can you come on and ask your audacious ass? I thought I can avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been seeing all of this amazing jewelry that you've been making lately. Holy gosh. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> you've just been a little posting maniac with all of your beautiful things. I love that snake ring that you made. I made two more today. <laughs> oh my God, that's so sexy. I love your work. So gorgeous. I'm going to put it on Etsy. Yeah, yeah. And um, a lot of people are selling straight off of Instagram these days for that kind of stuff. Really? Yeah. I didn't know I can do that, but I'm going to check that out now. Yeah, so Instagram um, and then cute little videos, just like a little 15 second video on Instagram where you just like show, don't look at my manicure. I need a manicure so bad. <laughs> I was working out in the yard, but anyway, so you're, um, you just show the ring off and um and talk about you know a little story about how it came into your mind and um yeah people will buy it right off of instagram these days yeah i would like to actually do some business with the jewelry because that that one thing that makes me mindfully busy and uh creating something that i mean i, I like to do that well you have a unique talent I don't think I've seen wire wrapping as beautiful as yours in my entire life. And I come from a pretty groovy place. Like British Columbia, Canada is like, you know, there's a lot of people who do jewelry here and, you know, handicrafts. And that is really ex exquisite work. So <laughs> that's my infomercial for your work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice. Oh. So what's your audacious ask, lovely? Mm. I would like to get over the bump that I have about receiving. Actually, I just listened to someone and said that it, it, it's about receiving. It's not being who you are. So I would like to be me or to know me because my whole life I was just uh, taken up on other people's things. and. Uh, I don't know who I am or who I would be. I know I can choose, but still there is a being there that would like to come out. Okay, cool. So this is sort of like what came first, the chicken or the egg? Do you yeah. be first or do you, do you choose first? What was the first, do I what? <laughs> do I do eat first? Be, do you be you first? Or do you choose things first? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be. Oh, yeah, no right answer. Okay. No right answer. Are you willing to try on things uh, to find out who you really are, who you really be? Not always. Okay. So what would it mean about you if you were willing to try on things? 
I actually like to try on things as long as I don't know there is some inner resistance in okay. it. Cool. So, so is um when you do try on things, what do you experience? What I mean by trying on things is it's like, um, you know, am I the type of person who um, has my own Etsy? Are you willing to try it for, you know, a month and see how it goes? It didn't go actually. It went for one week, the first week, and then it stopped because I didn't pull energy. Yeah, you know, didn't put my energy in it. It's just there because other people told me that hey, we're gonna buy your stuff if it's on Etsy, but then they didn't. So yeah. it's just there, and I know it's gonna be something, or I'm gonna do something with it, and probably this is the time now because mm -hmm. the cleaning is like, like you know, my life is screaming for a change. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm doing the snake ring business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So everywhere you've made you, um, subject to like who you're being mm -hmm. is subject to approval from others. Yeah. So you don't get to be that unless people like it. Will you destroy and uncreate all of that? Yes. Okay, good and bad, right and wrong, pod and pock, all nine boys, shorts and beyonds. What if you were willing to try on being you audaciously for a week? <laughs> I can't imagine, yes. Yeah, do it for a week. And you could make your choices based on that. It's like, okay, cool. Is that an audacious choice for me? Yes or no? And if it is, then choose it. And if it isn't, then don't choose it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, oh, well, Jennifer said I should, you know, have an Instagram video every day about some beautiful new thing that I made. Is that an audacious choice for me? Yeah. <laughs> well, then do it. <laughs> I have to make every day something. My I started just started to feel my the tip of my fingers, I, the way I pull the wire. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I gotta you know do else something. People fun. love they love videos of people who are craftspeople. Yeah, I that's what yeah. I do actually. I go to YouTube and I look at videos, and that's how I learn a snake ring too. Yeah, yeah. So, what if you were that person? Would that be yeah. an audacious choice? <laughs> I need some equipment to do it actually. You, know, you just need a nice little phone. Get the best phone you can afford. Uh, I have the best phone I could afford. <laughs> yeah, and just use the best phone you can afford. That's it. And some light I need. Yeah. Yeah, we well, do need a light. You need something that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> I learned about it. Yeah, right now I'm at my friend's uh, space and we're gonna make a video for her business. <laughs> nice. Well, that's fun. So, yeah. So, uh, nobody else who's listening do that. Ask this week, you know, if I made this choice, would it be an audacious choice for me? And then if it is, then just, you know, you know, just close your eyes and jump. <laughs> like, because you're going to know what the energy of an audacious choice for you is. Yeah, it's like, eh, back off. Yeah, well, you were the one who was talking about creating stuff and then running away. Yeah. So what if you created stuff and then jumped? <laughs> yeah, kind of scary. Um, yeah, okay. scary slash exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> yeah, scary and exciting are the same thing. Okay. Same biochemical signature. Awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Okay, so that was the audacious ask, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. And if you didn't get your question answered here, you can actually join us on the Audacious Ask group on Facebook. And so click around and look for us on Facebook and join us next week on the Audacious Ask. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Thank you.